What's the lowest to the ground that you've, you've, you've ever did in terms of... So that was uh, a few years ago. That was, it started off as a joint venture. I found this opportunity in South Kensington. I packaged it up and it was a deal to build two new build houses with triple basements, three levels down. I showed it to the investor, greed took over. She wanted to buy it straight away. So within one week, she's exchanged a nine million pounds or 10 million pound project. We, we completed soon after and um, we started it. Well, we started the planning, planning process, but in the meantime, basement policies changed in West London. That means all basements had to go on standby and hold wow. for a year. Wow. So my, my, uh, we had a joint venture. We had a 30% profit share of potentially 24 million pound project. Would have been millionaires. So um, that the, the, the basement uh, policy changed, so that was stopped. So in the meantime as well, stamp duty went up. So our profit from 30% was going like this, because as soon as stamp duty went up, market came down. Absolutely. So instead of selling it for 24 million quid, unfortunately, they had just sold for, I think, about 9.5 million pound each. Wow. So there's zero profit. Wow. Zero. I, I never actually dis delivered the project because I split up my ex-business partner. He, he, he carried it to the end, but I, I know they've just sold. But, um, so that, that was the biggest job we've ever done. That project was valued at, you know, what, 20 million quid. Nine, the bill cost ended up to be about nine million quid. That must have been pretty exciting at the beginning. Oh yeah, because we were two, we were two Jack the Lads. We thought, yeah, of course. Ed, everything we're touching, we're working with David Gandhi, Kylie Minogue, all these sort of people. We were, we were doing uh, TV things for Channel 4, BBC, and it's just fun. So uh, would you say when, everything you were touching back then and everything was just turning into gold. If we go a little bit deeper now, because it's where I like to go, and I really like to understand the person's state, because I think everything happens internally before you see it in the 3D world, in terms of the physical world. So who were you when you were in that position in terms of internally? How did you feel? Did you feel good? Did you feel happy? Did you feel more motivated well, than invincible. now? Invincible. We invincible. Felt invincible. <laughs> invincible. Because we, we were making so much money we were going, we, 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 it was like, oh, let's go and buy a new AP this week, or let's go and buy a new boat. Oh, yeah, let's go and buy a new Porsche each. We were, it was crazy. It, it was obsessed, but obsessed with the wrong things, materialistic things. Absolutely. We, and we thought it would never, the bubble would never burst. Yeah, yeah. But circumstances change. Of course. Things happened with my ex-business partner behind the scenes, and it all got cocked up. So that's when um, I, I had to really pull myself out of the, 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 the doldrums yeah. because from going from hero back down to yeah. sitting in this office, I got rid of everyone on my own thinking, how am I going to pull this one out of the bag and survive? You know, I thought I can't get rid of the office. I've got to keep this office on, you know, big overheads here. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but I just, I just sit there on my desk, hands in my head thinking, shit. Well, I knew I can, I can create content on social media. Yeah, yeah. I can do videos. I started my YouTube channel because I wanted to create content for YouTube because any slanderous comments, what he was doing, the truth is out there. Sure, sure. And anyone who wants to find out anything about me, just go back to YouTube two years ago, you'll see it all. And, so, and, and slowly, slowly, I'd, I had someone come in, uh, a, a PA came in, she said, Nick, I want an internship. I said, look, at the moment, um, there's nothing available. She goes, I don't care. I said, look, there's a lot of going on at the moment. She goes, look, you know, I know what you're going through. I said, okay. I said, I'm gonna give you the best internship you've ever had because you're gonna be trained like me. Yeah. You're gonna be, you're gonna be getting loads of crap on the phone. Yeah. You're gonna be doing this. Gonna, people are gonna come in, but we're gonna get through it together. So yeah. that, that was Tess. So she was with me a year. And then, you know, we sort of was picking it Built up. Picking up. up picking and that's up. amazing, and that's amazing. You actually came up uh, yesterday in our meeting at the Shard. Uh, and because uh, Nishan, who we met, he actually asked me, what do, you, what do I look for in relationships and collaboration? Mm -hmm. And I used yourself as an example. And, and I think one of the things that really attracted me to this um, relationship, I guess, that, that we're sort of starting to hopefully do very well, is the fact that, you know, you have to admire. You see, when, when people walk in, you get a lot of old school investors or business owners that they want to see... Bef 
before they invest in something, they want to see what your track record is like. So it's they all ask about you proving your worth. Yeah, right. Prove, prove where, to me. Where myself is more, I, if you're sitting in front of me asking me for an opportunity, I don't want to know how much success you've had. I want to know how much failures you've had, yeah. because it takes real guts to overcome all of that and exactly. still want to do it. You know. Exactly. And I think that's where the attraction is yeah. and, 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 and the collaboration was stronger on us want, me wanting yeah. to con recontact you again because, well, I didn't know until I got here, Yeah. Uh, but it, it made it even more, do you know what? You believe in something and you stand for what you exactly. believe and regardless of what happens, you're still here because I can relate. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people can. Uh, and I question when business owners ask, what have you done in the past, you know? I, People are fearful to say, well, I've done this, this, that, and I failed at all of them. Okay. Where don't, don't fear well, that because yeah. there are people like myself and I think Nick will appreciate that, mm. you know? And yeah, people don't tell the truth. So when, when people yeah. come, they, they can't speak about their journey because it's, it's all lies anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And people come to this lovely city of London because they want to reinvent themselves, you know? You go. That you have people have meetings every day. All these meetings taking place in London. All these off-market agents and deal makers. Nothing ever happens. Nothing ever happens. I was a victim. All, all these off-market deals. You go. Oh, I've got a deal. I've got a three million pound project off-market. Okay, get the contracts in. We have it. You would never be able to get the contracts in because it's all a load of hot air. Completely. Because your agent would say, "Oh, I need to find his fee." Oh, then I got it off Joe Blogs, and he needs a find his fee. Then there's another find his fee. Completely. No Completely. And we, we were victims in 2012. Our first offices were in uh, Berkeley Square in Berkeley Street. And um, between 2011 and 2012, assume our model that we had and the purpose of occupying um, uh, Berkeley Square in Mayfair was to deliver this product that we had, which is basically packaging, packaging deals up and selling it to investors. And the structure that we had and the finance product mm -hmm. we had was great. But CML regulations, Council of Mortgage Lending, changed in 2012, where things changed so much, every application for a mortgage was getting rejected. Mm. Being in Mayfair, you don't just pack up and walk away after month two because you're on a 12-month mm. contract. You try to make it work. Mm. And there were loads of these uh, consultants and yeah. cowboys occupying the streets it of could, Mayfair. It could work again. You know, there is, you know, but I think all the best deals in London they're going to be with the main agents anyway. 100%. Or with the main agents, but 100%. under the radar. 100%. 100%. There's no such thing as bloody a true off-market property. So like, there's a load of bullshit. And on that note, I question whether good deals make it to, make it to auctions nowadays. Yeah. I don't think they do. It's the, 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 the like we said that book, the key person of influence. All the key people of influence in every sector, the deals always go to them never goes to anyone else. And when one of these key personal influence don't want it, it then goes down another level. Absolutely. To us. Absolutely. So we need to get up here, the key, per we need to be key perfect people of influence. So anyone's talking about your sector, they know where to go. It's you. Yeah. Anyone's talking about me or our sector, it's us. Absolutely. Then we get all the best deals. Whether, it, whether it's deal flow or investments or other, other opportunities.